In this video, I'm gonna talk about what is a successful concrete structure. My name is Tyler Lay, and I devote my life to helping people like you make successful concrete structures. So what is a successful concrete structure? Because people have all kinds of definitions. You know, I think we can simplify these down to two main topics. You have to have strength. You have to have structures that are strong enough to hold the loads that are placed on top of them. That one's essential. That one's pretty easy. That one's pretty straightforward. But the next one, serviceability. What? What does that mean? Well, serviceability means, does it meet the user's expectations? Because if the user's not happy, then it doesn't meet their expectations, they're not gonna like it, they're gonna want something different. So a good analogy is to talk about cars. I personally think the new Tesla Model X is an amazing, beautiful, awesome car. I don't have one, I'd love to get one, I think it's great. My mom, she was thinking about new cars, I said, oh, oh mom, you gotta try the Tesla X, it's self-driving, it's cool, it's supposed to be the best designed car on the market, but you know what? She took one look at it and saw these doors that popped up like this, and she said, I don't want that car. In her mind, she was not interested. She it was not her desire to have a car with windows or doors that actually came up like that. She just wasn't gonna have it. Didn't meet her expectations. Here's a jalopy, super old car. This car runs, this car works. Not my car, by the way. But this car is out there and being used today. And a lot of people would say it's a piece of junk. Notice it doesn't have any headlights, right? It's missing its grill. It's missing a lot of, uh, it doesn't have any hubcaps. It's missing tons of stuff, but it drives. And to some people, that's good enough. For some people, that's all they want. They just want it to drive. They just want it to be good enough. So that's what serviceability comes down to. It's kind of depends on the application, depends on the user. It depends on what they're wanting it to do. But in the world of concrete, I made a list here of common things. Now, it doesn't mean it's, it's everything, but common things we want are hardened in place concrete structures to do. We want them to protect steel. We want them to keep fire or keep outside chemicals from reaching our steel. We want it to keep water out, keep water from moving between things. Maybe we want a very, very smooth surface. Maybe we have to drive uh, trucks over it or heavy equipment. We want low amounts of deflection. If we step on things that move a lot, people aren't happy. People don't like that. They don't like moving things. They like things that are stiff. Cracks scare people. Oh, cracks! They think the concrete's trash because it's got some cracks in it. Cracks happen, right? And we want our structures to have minimal amount of repairs. But different environments, different applications, they require different things. And we need to keep that in mind. There's not a one size fits all and you have to think heavily about what do I want my concrete to do? But what is the cost of poor performance? What, what does that mean for society or for us? Well, there's repairs you have to have. While you're repairing or working on the structure, people can't use it as often and that's not good. There's traffic, oh, traffic. Worker safety, best way to keep them safe is keep them at home keep them off the job sites so they're not having to work in traffic, not having to work in these dangerous environments. It reduces our budget to build new structures. That money has to come from somewhere. So how do we ensure success? And there's not one method. There's a whole suite of methods. I'm gonna talk about some of them. Number one, we need to set reasonable criteria. It's very important in the design stage to tell people what you want and it needs to be reasonable. Don't ask for everything. Ask for what you want, for what you need, for what you can't live without. We gotta hold each other accountable. 
We're not going to get everything right. We're not going to always be reasonable. We have to help each other. We have to keep talking to one another to make sure that we're not asking too much of the contractor. The contractor is not asking too much of the owner. That we're working together as a team to make this a success. We have to be willing to pay for quality. As an owner, if you're getting something that's going to be longer lasting, you got to be ready to pay for it. You can't be expected to get it for nothing. This is a huge deal. We have to communicate with one another. We have to help each other out. If we're not getting something that we really want, it's our job to say something. We have to. And one way to do this is something called performance-based specifications. These are where, where we tell in the design stage what performance we want and how we expect our, our group to get there. We're gonna have the owner or the engineer is gonna ask for what they want and they're gonna use tests to help make sure that the contractor gets there and they're gonna work together to make sure that the team is happy. It's a team effort and that's how we produce high quality structures. Hey, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up Think about subscribing to my channel. You might want to hit the bell, too. Do you know the bell actually gives you notifications when I submit more videos in the future? And please leave me a comment below, especially if you want to hear more about performance-based specifications, because I'm thinking about making more videos about them. Hey, take care, everybody. Bye.